Berlin, Germany's old yet modern capital city. A fascinating European metropolis with a dramatic history in which contemporary architecture merges with the imposing character of a centuries-old city. A melting pot of both history and culture. One of the most exciting cities in the world. A myth reborn. The Alexanderplatz is the historic yet new pulsating heart of the city. Here, many famous demonstrations and celebrations have taken place. The Weltzeit Uhr survived the former DDR, and at a height of 368 meters, the television tower is Berlin's tallest building. The Alex is still dominated by the Marienkirche, the city's second oldest parish church and a remnant of the late Middle Ages. The large Neptune fountain is decorated with the god of the sea and his female cortege. A handy meeting place for locals, tourists and the city's bird life. On one side of the square is a striking neo-Renaissance building known as Red City Hall due to its brick walls. The square derived its name in 1805 to commemorate Tsar Alexander I when he visited Friedrich Wilhelm III. The city walls feature the city's history in a series of frieze reliefs. Today the metropolis is once again ruled from here. The Nikolai Quarter was built by the DDR government as a sort of old town. A European Disneyland for the city's 750th anniversary. It's a popular area. New medieval buildings that display various guilds and stone statues that surround the city's oldest church. Nostalgia is all around. This was once the city's oldest settlement. In 1228, its municipal laws were made. And during the Second World War, it was almost totally destroyed, but has since been rebuilt in historic style. Today, this district is popular with tourists. Restaurants, bars and boutiques compete against each other for trade. On the banks of the Spree, Emperor Wilhelm II had the Berliner Dom built. It represented the main church of Berlin's Prussian Protestant faith. This, the largest Protestant building in Germany, served the Hohenzollern dynasty as both a church and mausoleum, inspired by St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. The faithful from all over the world visit this splendid building that was rebuilt after the war in more modest form. However, it contains 95 sarcophagi, the large Wilhelm Sauer pipe organ and various mosaics of the four evangelists. Nearby in Spandau Wurstadt are several tangled backyards that were built in the 19th century and contained both residential and work buildings. The biggest and best known of these is the Hackerschenhofer, a labyrinth of eight inner courtyards. The first one is surrounded by splendid Art Nouveau facades.
The lower levels contain entertainment, bars, restaurants and art shops. And on the upper floors, there are apartments and offices. Today, the inner courtyards are one of the city's most popular areas. Their restoration has certainly paid off. Berlin Central Station. The biggest rail interchange station in Europe is situated between the Spree and Humboldt Harbour and the Moabit district of Berlin Mitte. This huge construction of steel and glass has two levels that are each used for rail traffic. The upper one travels in a west-easterly direction at a height of 10 meters. The most modern train station in the world was planned soon after the reunification in 1990. In 1995, construction work began under extremely difficult conditions. On the 26th of May 2006, this building, which is close to the new government quarter, was inaugurated. The Spree is Berlin's lifeline, a slow-flowing and calm river, yet one that has determined the growth of the city. The Spree has many waterways, canals and lakes, and is spanned by 1,662 bridges. That's more than there are in Venice. Steamboat trips are popular, and the historic buildings of Berlin Mitte can be observed from the water. Even the Nikolai Quarter looks different from here, smaller, and a bronze statue of St. George catches the eye. Berlin is a city of water. Its riverbanks are ideal for relaxation, and the modern architecture of this new seat of government is a fine sight indeed. However, when the weather is fine, the waterways are busy. Dem Deutschen Volker is written above the western portal of the Reichstag. This is where the representatives that have been elected by the people make the country's laws. More recent history has taken place here. In 1894, the Reichstag was inaugurated, and on the 9th of November 1918, the German Republic was declared. In February 1933, Following the takeover of power by Adolf Hitler, the Reichstag was set ablaze. Today, the Deutsche Bundestag stands for democracy, a modern parliament with an historic ambience, crowned by an architectural masterpiece. Englishman Sir Norman Foster planned the capital's new site, a glass cupola that is accessible, and within it, a spiral ramp. The panoramic view from the observation platform at the side of the cupola is truly outstanding. On the 3rd of October 1990, a reunification celebration took place in this symbolic building. We travel to nearby Potsdam, a city of castles and gardens, and with an old town that features a lively market atmosphere. When the monarchy settled here, so did their armies, and with them came craftsmen, merchants and artists from many countries.
The castle like Nauna Gate leads to the Russian colony of Alexandrovka and then to Belvedere on the Pfingstberg. The red brick buildings of the Dutch Quarter feature various shops. A French church completes the impressive appearance of this once residential city, with its history of the Hohenzollern and the Prussian way of life. Delving a little further back into history, there was German King Friedrich the Great. In 1745, he began to design Potsdam's Sanssouci Park. His summer residence gradually became an abundant ensemble of castles and gardens. And under Friedrich Wilhelm IV, it was further enlarged. These are the Friedenskirche, the Bildergalerie, and also the Neuenkammern. Originally an orangery that was transformed into a guest residence. Idyllic paths lead to an extraordinary building, the Chinese House. An impressive example of the popularity of Chinese architecture in the royal courts of Europe during the 18th century. The garden architect Lenné made one section of the park an English garden with many fountains and fine chinoiseries. Roman baths originated in the style of an Italian villa. A picturesque complex with a dwelling for a gardener, a tea pavilion, arcades and numerous baths. For Crown Prince Friedrich Wilhelm IV and his wife, his father had the Schloss Schlalottenhof built on the periphery of the park, one of the outstanding works of Prussian master builder Karl Friedrich Schinkel. The small castle is surrounded by neat parkways and meadows. The new palace is located at the park's western entrance. In this ornate building, Friedrich the Great intended to demonstrate that Prussia was still a force to be reckoned with. It was built when the Seven Years' War with Russia and Austria was lost. The park and its castles have survived their creators and are now one of the most beautiful places of culture in Berlin. But Friedrich the Great favoured one castle more than any other, Sanssouci, a gem that is one of the most beautiful examples of European Rococo architecture. Following various of the king's ideas, Georg Wenceslas von Knobelsdorf located the one-storey high castle with its central cupola at the top of a vineyard. The king wanted to reside in a peaceful setting and away from court ceremonials and politics without worries. Thus, Sans Souci, a place of calm and tranquility. The rear front square is encircled by a circular colonnade. Castle has only 12 rooms, it's convenient and compact. Its guest rooms accommodated friends who appreciated art, business and politics. Voltaire was a frequent guest. In the opulent marble hall that is decorated with columns and large doors that open up towards a terrace, extravagant feasts took place. In the adjoining concert room, the walls are decorated with ornaments and paintings that feature motifs of Greek mythology. 
Although the king worked here on affairs of state, this place was primarily a haven of relaxation, an escape from the realities of power. Returning to Berlin, we embark on a trip at the Eastern train station on the Panorama S-Bahn, whose carriages are equipped with large panoramic windows. Marvelous views turn the journey into a wonderful adventure. We cross the Spree and travel towards Sutring. We pass by many buildings of Wilhelminian design that have withstood the ravages of war. Past the city hall of Schoenberg, where on the 26th of July 1963, US President John F. Kennedy proclaimed, Ich bin ein Berliner. We travel through several modernized stations of the S-Bahn. Some have been restored in historic style. The new Berlin probably has the most efficient and organized traffic network in Europe. In the historic center of the city is one of the most beautiful squares that was named after a regiment that was once stationed here, the Gandamen Market. The former Schauspielhaus, that later became the Concert House, looks noble and dignified, and to one side of it is the French Cathedral. On the other side is the German Cathedral. At the beginning of the 18th century, both these buildings were given ornate towers on the order of Friedrich the Great. In the center of the square, in front of a large staircase that leads up to the entrance of the concert house, is a monument that dates back to 1871. It features one of Germany's greatest poets, Friedrich von Schiller. Due to the special atmosphere of the square, many open-air events take place here. Between 1961 and 1990, during the Cold War, Friedrichstrasse contained what was famously known as Checkpoint Charlie. Directly behind it is the beginning of the Berliner Mauerweg, a remnant of a sad chapter of the city's history, when both East and West were physically separated. Old cars from the east are now attractions for the city's tourists who visit the monuments of a once divided city. A few sections of the infamous Berlin Wall remain that bear witness to 40 years of separation. It was intended to make escape from East Germany impossible. The Kaiser Wilhelm Memorial Church is another reminder of the past. It was built to commemorate the Emperor, but during the Second World War, it was badly damaged in bombing raids. Following severe protests in 1961, the church was not dismantled and a new church was built next to the Termruhne. The present church building is not a reminder of a former emperor, but of the horrors of war. A splendid gate, flanked by stone elephants, welcomes visitors to the Zoological Garden, the oldest and most popular wildlife park in Germany.
Within a 35 hectare area live 15,000 animals from every corner of the world, accommodated in fine enclosures. One of the polar bears became famous when it was weaned by bottle and developed into a fine specimen. Alexander von Humboldt, Peter Josef Lenner and scientist Martin Lichtenstein were the founders of Germany's first zoological garden. However, that doesn't seem to impress this orangutan family while they're busy eating. The royal animal collection once formed the basis of this zoo. During the Second World War, a tragedy took place here. Only 91 of 10,000 animals survived the bombing of 1943. The Olympia Stadium is still a gigantic and remarkable sight. For the 11th Olympic Games in 1936, the Dritte Reich spared no expense. The complex can accommodate 96,000 onlookers, a structure that was built by 2,600 laborers over a two-year period, at a cost of around 15 million Reichsmark. The March Brothers built it in classic Nazi architecture and inspired by ancient Rome. The biggest and most splendid of Berlin's Hohenzollern castles is Schloss Charlottenburg, whose wrought iron and shining golden entrance attracts hordes of visitors. Several Prussian kings were responsible for its splendid appearance and dome tower. In the Ehrenhof, outside the main building, is a bronze monument of the Great Elector. This important Baroque monument shows him mounted on a horse, triumphant in battle. The first garden complexes originated in Berlin when the Hohenzollern created wonderful parks for their castles. In around 1700, the first German Baroque garden originated here, and later an English garden was also added. Copies of ancient sculptures indicate the strong influence of Versailles. Many ponds and fountains adorn the strict garden symmetry. First-class European architecture by Godot and Lenné. This green oasis is the most popular park in Berlin. In just five years, a new city district was built around Potsdamer Platz, a modern metropolis designed by famous architects, a masterpiece of stone, steel and glass. Two main protagonists competed against each other, Sony and Daimler Chrysler. Sony allowed its architects to unite various buildings and a futuristic fountain under a tent like cupola. Daimler Chrysler also employed some adventurous designers. The result was the incredible square in the city center. In 1945, this busy square was bombed to ruins, and then the area was cut in two by the Berlin Wall. Today, it is an example of imaginative city architecture. A new city has emerged from its historic past. Berlin, a young metropolis of the third millennium that is increasingly becoming the center of Europe. This metropolis with a heart 
is always worth a visit.